So discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using models. Okay. So this is a question that this is a type of question that comes up quite regularly in HSE, and it's often not well answered, simply because there doesn't appear to be anything chemistry related here. Okay. So it's not directly asking you about anything that you've studied in chemistry. What it's asking is about using your own um, ideas about the way we approach science in general. Okay. So a model is basically anything that we use to describe a physical phenomenon. Or actually just to describe any phenomenon. They could be metaphysical, I suppose, as well. Um, so if you have a model, you're using it to explain something. Okay, or to at least visualize something. So models make it possible to visualize and describe substances and processes on a small scale. So for instance, um, you know, a computer model would be something that you type into a computer, a program that you create, to simulate something that's happening in real life. Okay? So that would be a computer model. So we're using that model to predict something that will happen in real life. For example, we can use models to show how different elements react and form bonds with each other. Now, models are used all over science because we don't always fully understand everything that happens. Okay? We can't possibly know everything. So we use models to sort of explain things that we're not fully aware of yet. And by testing the models, we can actually show if they're true or false. Models can be effective at getting across board general ideas but it can be difficult to model smaller details. So a general model is excellent. Um, it can be used to describe lots of things, and it can be used to describe things to people that aren't specialists in the field. However, general models have the difficulty that if you want to model every single detail, the model becomes very convoluted, very difficult to understand. So just look up if you have the time, um, if you're interested in physics, the standard, uh, the standard model for particle physics, um, and you'll see that it's quite uh, mind-boggling, okay? Because it's trying to model everything that happens on the subatomic scale. So it's hard to model properties like melting and boiling points, and it's possible to be misled by models because they are only a simplified version of the reality. So a model can often lead people off track because they're so simple that they often miss. Um, important nuances of the physical phenomena that they should have realized were there. Okay, so models can be actually misleading um, and they can actually hold back some science sometimes. So in order to use models effectively we have to be able to one, understand what they are and then two, be willing to give them up if they do not uh, realistically represent the phenomena that we're actually interested in. So we have to be able, willing to give up models. And often that's difficult for scientists because you could spend your life creating a model and it'd be really, really unfair on you if, you if someone found some evidence that disproved your entire model and so you just had to throw it away. Okay? So that second part is a little bit more difficult than the first part. Okay?